116 total attempts from the 12 SLS competitors across four heats went down on the resurrected Hubba hideout obstacle. Braden Hoban led the charge in most attempts overall with 18, as well as the most landed tricks with 10. 70% of which featured a flip trick into either a grind or slide, topped off by the kickflip backside nose blunt. Needless to say, it was no surprise that Braden rode away with the prestigious Brick Trophy for his efforts, although some might argue his lack of anything other than regular tricks, apart from one switch tray, could be considered as one weakness in Hoban's performance. In his own words, Braden mentioned that SLS's resurrection event didn't feel like a contest, and instead was more like a typical session at a spot. It didn't feel like a contest, like it just felt like it was just like skating with the bros, like session, you know. The 11 other competitors' efforts in the session ranged greatly as far as how much work was put into the hubba. Taylor Kirby, for example, did a single back grind on camera, and that was it giving him the highest consistency rate at landing tricks out of the entire field with a perfect one-for-one -one record. Shane was the 11th most productive skater on the sesh, first trying what looked like an overzealous switch flip front grind, before deciding to throw down a casual crook, then calling it a day. Nigel Houston landed one trick out of the four attempts he made on camera, sticking what appeared to be a first try attempt at a hefty switch heel flip front tail hyping up the crowd, and getting financially compensated for his efforts. The money distribution in this event didn't appear to have a rhyme or a reason, other than giving some added color to the production with Paul and his ostentatious Versace shades shelling out cash for landed tricks. The first time we see money being handed out was when Braden missed an impossible front grind, receiving what may have been about 40 bucks or more, presumably for the kickflip front nose grind before. If money was given to Matt Berger for his kickflip backtail fakie, or Felipe Gustavo for the kickflip front nose, it wasn't depicted on camera. And they were the first two skaters to land a trick during the event, hinting that the money handouts from Costin and P-Rod were an afterthought. Brayden landed the impossible Losi grind slash sketchy 50-50 and got what looked like maybe $20 to $40 from P-Rod. Immediately after the impossible Losi grind, Brayden is depicted doing a kickflip front nose grind to fakie, which brings to question the continuity with the editing of this event. Did Brayden really do two beastly tricks in a row without anyone else taking a turn on the hubba? Felipe, Berger, and Nija just stood there the whole time while Braden came back and let him snake the whole squad for another banger. The countdown clock also disappears at this point, and P-Rod and Eric's philanthropic contributions become more and more substantial, with Braden clearly walking away $100 richer after the kickflip nose grind. Braden kept pouring on the gnar by responding to Nija's $200 switch heel front tail, stomping the kickflip back nose grind immediately after. After, getting what looked like the same amount Nija got in dough, say $200. The clock miraculously returns while Felipe battles the switch flip back tail. Next thing we know, Brayden throws down another banger via the kickflip front blunt on this behemoth of a hubba and gets another chunk of change for his trouble. Felipe closes out the first heat with his signature switch flip back tail, impressively holding on while casually backing into the homie pit. The homie pit was a nice touch of authenticity to recreate the hubba hideout vibe, but it also resulted in shinners and at least a piece of tripod getting busted. Some people weren't even paying attention to what was going on as they sat dangerously close to the hubba. Heat 2 was scheduled to feature Louie, Desenzo, Deshaun, and Jamie, but for whatever reason, Yuto decided to forego waiting until his assigned spot in Heat 3 and became the first skater in Heat 2 to land a trick, exemplified by the switch front tail. Ryan Desenzo had the lowest consistency of any skater in this contest, landing two tricks with 11.76% accuracy. In order for Desenzo to land the frontside flip nose grind, he took it upon himself to continue hucking in the third heat with no success, then finally in the fourth heat he stuck it after 15 attempts. Sadly, handouts from Costin and P-Rod had dried up by the fourth heat. So Desenzo's effort was more of a personal mission, which was capped off by the second try frontside flip gap off the top of the hubba to flat. 
Deshaun was the second skater in Heat 2 to land a trick with the front nose blunt, and like Yuto, didn't impress P Rod or Costin enough to get any Skrilla. Jamie Foy's switch front crook was deemed adequate for some loving pats and a little blue cheese, accompanied by a heel flip back 5 0 for some more cheddar. Yuto waved around some paper after the Nolly front one switch crook and would close out the second heat with a wild nollie back one switch nose grind. Debatably one of the scariest and maybe the most difficult trick of the day. Also in the second heat, Louie got himself a little guap from the kickflip back smith, and Deshaun perfected the tray front grind after a few tries to get both trucks locked in, securing a few bills in return. Structure around this event continued to deteriorate with Heat 3, where Desenzo actually started it off even though he was supposed to be done in Heat 2. Vincent Malou's front tail wasn't worth a payout, and if his front one switch crook got him any money, it wasn't captured on film. But he did close out the Heat with a kickflip front tail, receiving the last visible payment from P-Rod and Costin. The fourth and final Heat opened up the field to anyone willing to keep trying stuff, and Braden clearly was having one of those days where he couldn't miss a trick, landing five more, with all but two of them going down on the first try. Hoban landed the impossible nose grind and kickflip back nose blunt on the second try. At least that's how this edit depicted the event. Everyone else's landed tricks in Heat 4 were a step down from what they'd landed in their previous Heat. Except for Vincent's Switchback Smith and Switchback 5-0, the former of which was the first trick of Heat 4. Yuto and Deshaun threw down a couple nose slides, and Big Boy Foy made an honest effort at the heel back tail, but a broken board put the kibosh on that. So yeah, Brayden absolutely annihilated this session. And thank god he was invited because without his destruction of the temporarily remade, soon to be torn down hubba hideout replica, this resurrection would have remained dead Bruh. on arrival. Was this event fun to watch? Absolutely. Were there edits that put the continuity into question? Of course. Look at Brayden's kickflip back nose blunt for example. Vincent looks like he's ready to throw down after Braden lands what's displayed as the final trick of the day, along with Deshaun and maybe even Felipe getting ready to take another turn. Maybe the bros were hanging back there to give Braden moral support, or maybe they took their turn after Braden but didn't land their tricks, and ending the SLS broadcast on some bails instead of a brutal kickflip back nose blunt would have been less climactic. Was the skateboarding impressive? Yes, and we even got Yuto back on the SLS scene. Should the resurrection format replace the traditional SLS contest series? I don't think so, because this hubba measures only a narrow scope of a skater's skills, whereas the runs and best tricks section style of a traditional SLS contest, while still limited in its own ways, drastically expands the realm of measuring an individual's overall plywood pushing mastery. The winner-take-all format for the Resurrection series is fine, and in this case there was zero question Brayden walked away the top dog on every measurable metric. And for a single obstacle, overall impression might be the only measure that's needed for such a contest, while the technical scoring can reside only in the traditional SLS contests. You're not getting second place today. You're not getting third place. For those who are curious about who would have taken second and third in this resurrection, based solely on the next most tricks landed, it'd be Vincent in second with seven and a 63.64% consistency, and then Yuto with his quartet at 50% consistent. Is there room for SLS resurrection to improve? Yeah. Andrew Cannon apparently doesn't get paid enough to expand his vocabulary beyond three adjectives. It, it, it honestly is pretty shocking. That's shocking. Come on! That hub is so short and high. So high. So amazing. It's amazing. So awesome that they actually built the hub hideout wall. That was so awesome. How awesome. That was mind-blowing. The fact that Desenzo is still going is honestly mind-blowing. That's mind-blowing. That he ain't was playing. absolutely oh mind-blowing. It is big. Welcome Straight to the chunk factor. Concrete. The chunk factor, no doubt. Whoa. Costa just punches him in the face. And it's like 
he literally just couldn't not skate. Sinclair's like, yo, man, you need to chill. We gotta go hit the streets tomorrow. <laughs> he yes. broke the tripod. Oh. He did it! He did the kick the back nose one! But Carl Watson's chill aura was a welcome addition to the commentary. Maiden, huh? Rebuilding an iconic spot replica behind a warehouse just to tear it down afterwards seems like a waste of hard work and a missed opportunity to build a spot that functions as either a future skate park or even a publicly accessible thoroughfare. The money handouts were entertaining, but it'd be nice to hear P-Rod or whoever's got the bag to justify each payment and disclose how much he gave for each trick. Vincent landed two of his seven tricks in the fourth heat, where Cash was no longer in the picture, but only got paid for the kickflip front tail as far as we know. Yuto got paid twice in heat two though, making what appeared to be more broccoli than Malou, who landed more tricks in his individual heat than Horigome. 